Good morning and welcome to Bears Den Baptist Church. I'm Kirsty Buchan and I'm on the leadership team here at BBC and I'm delighted to welcome you here this morning, whether you're joining us live on Zoom or on Facebook or YouTube. It's great to have you with us, gathering here this morning to worship God and hear from his word. Today in our service, our pastor John Crabe is going to be giving us the eighth in his series of talks from chapter 5 in Matthew on the Beatitudes. This morning John will be speaking on Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Persecution, that is hostility, oppression or ill treatment, especially because of race or political or religious belief, is something that told, Jesus told us as Christians to expect. In Matthew chapter 10, Jesus says, you will be hated by everyone because of me. And he says, when they arrest you and when you are persecuted. Persecution seems to be unavoidable when we are followers of Jesus, but the power of God is always sufficient. Jesus says, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. And those who stand firm to the end will be saved. But before John comes to speak to us, there are going to be a few more elements to our service. There will be some worship, um, a prayer of intercession for our world, and a testimony from one of our members, Janet Campbell. Janet will be speaking about her experiences of belonging to and participating in one of our church small groups, which are currently meeting together online. But before all of that, Let's open our service with a prayer. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, our Saviour, Holy Spirit, giver of life, we come before you this morning and thank you that through this incredible technology, we can join with each other as a church family, a body of believers, to worship you and give you your rightful place as Lord over all. Father God, we each come this morning with a unique story to tell, the story of our family, our health, our struggles and joys, our walk with you. Thank you, Father, that you know each of us intimately. You made us just as we are with all our imperfections. You walk with us through all the highs and lows of life, never leaving us nor giving up on us. Thank you that you choose us because we're imperfect so that your glory can shine more brightly in our lives. Please meet with each of us this morning, whatever our situation, and reveal yourself to us. Teach us about who you are and who we are in relation to you and how you want us to enact your love in the world. We ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We're now going to enjoy a time of worship. We're going to be led by Peter and Karen as we start off singing a song called Oceans. It's a beautiful worship song which reminds us that although we're often anxious and afraid, if we trust in Jesus to sustain us, we can do more than we ever imagined possible. Feet may fail 
morning. I've been invited to say a few words about the church house groups. I really enjoy our house group. We get together, we have a Bible study, um, or we could have a video that we watch, then we get together and we discuss it. We pray for each other, we pray for the world, and uh, we are supportive of, of each other. It's a good way to get to know people in the church. We haven't been in the church just over a year, and it was a very good way to get to know people in the church. The house groups are supportive, they're not threatening, they are good fun. We have a quiz at the end of the session, which some people took more seriously than others, uh, but it was good fun. And it's good to hear other people's views on some of the Bible studies or some of the videos that we have watched. And it gives me um, another way to look at these things, which is always good to look at. We know, most of us know the Bible so well, but it's good to hear somebody else's view of what's what their thoughts are on particular readings, and it's, it's very encouraging. We get together on Zoom currently, and we have the, the reading or the, the video, then we discuss it, then we have a, a time of prayer, or a time of um, catch up with each other. It's non-threatening, it's good fun, it draws us deeper into knowing Jesus and it encourages um, each of us in the group. You don't have to say anything, you don't have to do anything, but most of the time you're drawn into it because you want to know more about Jesus and how to be out of a deeper Christian life. I would encourage people to join the groups and I thank you for your time. Thank you Janet for sharing with us about all the things that you've got out of belonging to a small group. It's great to hear about the ways that meeting regularly with other people has blessed you in your relationship with God and in your relationship with others. I wonder if any of you have considered joining a small group it's a great way to get to know people in the church, um, get access to some excellent Bible study resources, and also to deepen your relationship with God and knowledge of the Bible. Particularly at this time, when there are so few opportunities to meet with people, it's an easy way to socialise from the comfort of your own home. Small groups are meeting weekly on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays on Zoom. 
And if this is something that you're interested in finding out more about, please get in touch with me, Kirsty Buchan. My email address is available in the weekly church newsletter and also in the church directory. Now we are going into a time of intercessory prayer for our world, which will be led by Andrew Stone. Let us pray. Father, you are a mighty God whom we can trust and whom our refuge is in and whose love is never failing. Father God, we thank you for the privilege of coming together and meeting as a family today. Help us to remember, if we are watching by Zoom or YouTube, that we are still your church, even though we are not meeting in a building. Lord, help us to do your will during what seems to be a storm for everyone in the world. But remember that you can speak into a storm and control it. Whilst we may be hurting from losing loved ones, suffering from sickness or struggling with finances, may we look to your example of resting in the boats, knowing that God is always with us and promises to be with us in any storm in our lives. Lord, we pray for Bearsden Baptist Church that we are able to carry on. Please give the leaders initiatives how to keep the ministries going. Support those who come to the church regularly and those who join us in Bumps and Bundles, Barista and Luncheon Club. Lord, mm. show us how we can be your beacon every day in some way to support others around us. <clears throat> Father God, we pray not only for our church, but also for the Glasgow Catholic Church, for the person of Archbishop Philip Tartiglialia. We pray for the community that is feeling a sense of loss and pain during this time. God, we think further abroad. We pray for Nick and Kate in South Africa. As a family away from home, we ask they cope with the coronavirus, mainly due to the lack of social distancing and the new variants. We thank you for their safe arrival back of Alan and Alison, who spent time with them there. We also praise you for the soon arrival of their fourth baby and pray for Kate and the baby's safety at this time and protection during the pregnancy and birth. We give thanks that you have provided them with a home that they have lived in for the past couple of years and the support they're getting in the church family in Claremont where they are in Cape Town. We ask during the eases of lockdown for Nick's social enterprise, for the Manenberg films that there will be re-established and you will provide for the support for the family through this. God, we also pray for Don and Lorna in Cape Town. We also thank you for their safe return. Thank you that you are a God of provision and we can trust you. And we ask that you provide for their Airbnb here back in Scotland. Also with their work, we ask that you will intervene as both Don and Lorna are unable to meet with their teams during the lockdown. We ask for Lorna's work with New Day will continue smoothly. You will provide initiatives on how they can keep their teams running and that their projects will carry on. Also with Don's work with Ubu and Philippi, for the projects of buildings, that God you will come and lift working restrictions to allow permissions to continue for all the people that Ubu is helping we pray for the winter fires that have happened throughout the squatter camps, that you've given shelter to those who have needed it, and that Ubu can carry on their work to help those. Again, we pray for protection for our mission links in South Africa. 
that they and the teams will be kept safe and well at this time and always. We stand beside both these families as they look forward into new seasons that you have prepared before them and that any changes that happen will benefit their mission and their work in South Africa. God, thank you that nothing can separate us from you when we pray. And as we pray together in our homes, you are listening. We ask, we keep turning to you. Encourage us to keep listening to your voice when you speak to us. Lord, keep our hearts close to you. Lord, we pray this in your precious name. Amen.
Our reading for today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 to 12. The Beatitudes. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Thank you, God, for this reading from your word. We've arrived at our destination in the series, which is the last, the eighth Beatitude. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I suspect one of the first questions we might ask is, how can those who are persecuted be considered blessed? And I suspect Jesus realized we would find this hard to understand because he repeats the beatitude in slightly different words, saying, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Well, I don't know if it gets any easier uh, with the repetition, to be honest. And really the whole New Testament suggests that Christians, believers, should expect persecution. Jesus in John 15, 18 says, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. I remember when I was in secondary school back in S2, the Gideons turned up to distribute their small red New Testament and Psalms to the whole year group. I was going through a time of bullying at that stage in my school career just being called stupid names and stuff like that and feeling a little bit isolated and lonely in my class and I remember thumbing through this little New Testament and coming to that section where it says you know where to go when you feel lonely or where to go when you feel people are attacking you and that little section sent me to John 15 18 if the world hates you keep in mind that it hated me first and I was an atheist at the time, but I was aware of Jesus and I respected him as a good teacher. And I took some comfort from those words in the Bible at that time. And just as it was happening to the apostles, it also happened to the prophets. It had happened to John the Baptist. It happened to Jesus himself. The attacks that came from the Jewish leaders and the Roman Empire, and it continued on. Uh, through a couple of hundred years, 300 years in the time of the Roman Empire and has continued on even up to the present time. So we then might ask, well, what, why not us? Why are we not persecuted here in the church in the UK? Is it because we live in a secular, a liberal, Western democracy where people are too nice, too respectful, too uh, open-minded to attack Christians? Or is it because we don't 
in fact, stand out from anyone else. We don't rock the boat. We don't have the same uh, boldness that the believers did in those New Testament days. In a contrasting statement in Luke 6, Jesus says this, Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestor treated the false prophets. And yet that, surely, is what most of us crave, to have people speak well of us. And we would be terrified of the thought of appearing on the front page of the Bulgai and Bearsden Herald because uh, we had offended people uh, by boldly speaking out the good news of the gospel of Jesus. Outside of the West and the Christian Southern Hemisphere, persecution is happening pretty much everywhere. Uh, Open Doors, who produced this map on the PowerPoint, uh, reckon that uh, three quarters of the countries in the world there is some degree of persecution. Uh, this map here is their top 50, what they call their world watch list. And just to give you an idea of the countries on it, uh, particularly the ones in, in red, the top 10 are North Korea, Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, Pakistan, Eritrea, Sudan, Yemen, Iran, and then in 10th place, India. And there are many different ways in which people can be persecuted. Uh, they might lose their rights, or they may lose their reputation. They might lose their jobs, their homes, uh, be split up from their families. They might lose their possessions, and sometimes, in extreme circumstances, even their lives. And it's estimated that on average, in any given year, a 100,000 Christian believers are martyred. So it is happening, and it has always happened since the days of Jesus. It's just not happening to us. I did come across one story um, of a situation back in November last year when the police turned up at a baptismal service uh, at an evangelical church, the Angel Church in Islington in London. Uh, they were going to have a, a service and 30 people had turned up for it a baptismal service and the police stopped this happening because they argued that it broke the then current regulations, the lockdown regulations. Uh, the minister obviously was a little bit upset uh, but he said this, he said he didn't reckon that they needed to adhere to the regulations because he said I believe we serve a greater good. Uh, they went on to have a, an outside service instead without the baptism. But I have to be honest and say I don't think that is persecution. Uh, that's merely the police seeking to get uh, the entire community to adhere to the regulations, which are there for a purpose. Now Paul, as much as any of the apostles, uh, was familiar with persecution. In 2 Corinthians 11, he writes about the various ways in which he was attacked over the years with prison, flogging, beating, stoning by Jews, by Gentiles, by false believers. A whole uh, litany of pretty severe persecution against his mission work. That is persecution. And how did he respond? Well, in the first letters of the Corinthians, he had said, when we are persecuted, we endure it. We're told in Hebrews that Jesus himself endured the cross. Neither Jesus nor Paul anticipated uh, that Christians would have any kind of victim mentality. Uh, instead, in Romans 8, 
Paul writes, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And those who are victorious in their suffering, we're told in the Beatitude, will inherit the kingdom of heaven. And so it's not a matter of weakness and defeat to face persecution. It is a matter of strength and victory. And if we want to know what that looks like, we just need to look at Jesus on the cross. Now, simply to endure it sounds a little bit like what we're seeking to do is just to grin and bear it, or to use a, a, a well-known British phrase to keep a stiff upper lip, a kind of stoical fortitude through tough circumstances. But Paul went beyond that. You may remember the story of Paul and Silas being arrested in Philippi and being stuck in the stocks in a prison there. Uh, the story is in Acts 16, and we're going to be looking at it in a little bit more detail in a couple of weeks' time. And they were there in the prison, and we're told that about midnight, the two of them were praying and singing hymns of praise, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly the jailer woke up, uh, and he was awoken by a massive earthquake that shook the foundations of the prison, and loosed the chains uh, of the prisoners, but didn't set them free. However, he thought in the darkness that they had all escaped, and so he threatened to kill himself, to fall on his sword, because he reckoned that the reaction of the magistrates would be far worse than suicide. But Paul stopped him, and instead shared the good news of Jesus with him. And as a result, the jailer and his entire household believed and were baptized, no doubt became uh, members of the church there in Philippi, to whom G uh, Paul later wrote. Now we're told that Paul and Silas were praying uh, as part of their little midnight worship service. But I wonder what they were praying for. Were they praying for an earthquake that would break their chains and set them free? Or were they praying for the jailer and his family? Jesus later on in Matthew 5 says this, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Paul in Romans 12 writes, Bless those who persecute you. Bless them, do not curse them. And here it could well be that he and Silas prayed for the jailer and the man and his family were saved. On the cross, Jesus himself prayed for those who had put him there, that they would be forgiven by God. Well, in the last, in the West, uh, we certainly do pray for the persecuted church. I would suspect mostly we pray uh, that they would be kept safe, that they would be set free from the persecution that they face. Uh, we support organizations such as Open Doors, Barnabas, Release International, and maybe a number of us here subscribe to their magazines and support them financially and in prayer. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I think that's a good thing to do. But I wonder how many of us, like Paul, like Jesus, actually pray for those who are doing the persecuting. You see, Paul was very much aware that he had at one time been on the other side. He had been a persecutor. He had hounded the Christians. He had pursued them as far as Damascus. He was throwing them in prison. Maybe he was even executing them as well. Until, of course, his vision of Jesus on the road to Damascus, when Jesus demanded to know why uh, he was persecuting him. And I wonder who it was that had been praying for Paul. I wonder if it was maybe Ananias, who was the one who was sent to speak to him, to share the good news with him, and to 
baptize him. A number of years ago, I had the opportunity to meet Brother Yun, uh, also known as the Heavenly Man, who was a leader in the underground church in China with a number of other leaders in Glasgow. And it was a privilege to hear him speak. He spoke in um, Mandarin or Cantonese, I don't know which, and had to be translated. And one of the questions we asked him was this, what can we pray for you and for your people? And how he responded startled us. He said, don't pray that the persecution would be lifted, but pray that we would stand up under the persecution. Because this is the thing that drives and motivates our mission to non-believers in our country. And indeed, as they ventured west back to Jerusalem in a mission they have to the countries on that route. And maybe he was conscious of the fact that he didn't want to lose that reward that is described in the Beatitude. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Brother Yun really believed that and lived it out in his own life and ministry. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we consider persecution as something that makes us feel uncomfortable. I'm sure that many of us are happy that uh, this persecution that does happen takes place in, in other countries or has taken place at other times in our own nation, uh, and we're insulated from it. But what the Bible teaches us is that this is something we should expect. Uh, it's certainly something that we should not allow to influence how we speak and act in the world. We should be willing to stand up and share what we believe about Jesus and to share the good news with others, just as someone like Brother Yun does in the underground church in China. Lord, we appreciate that that might make us less popular. It might damage our reputation for respectability uh, and it might bring persecution against us. But Lord, we're encouraged in the New Testament, particularly the book of Acts, to seek the boldness that comes through your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we need that today. Uh, so few people are coming to faith in Christ. And perhaps that's partly because we lack boldness. And we lack boldness because we don't ask for it because we're fearful of persecution. And clearly that's not been the case over the centuries. Uh, it's not the case in many other parts of our world where many people are persecuted and maybe even a hundred thousand lose their lives each year. Lord, transform our thinking in this area, both in terms of how we uh, operate on mission in our communities and in our nation, but also in terms of how we support and pray for others overseas who are facing that themselves today. Uh, they're receiving a blessing and perhaps we are not. And our thinking and our words and our actions need to change under the directing of your Holy Spirit and to the glory of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. As we reflect on those thoughts from Scripture, uh, let's turn to a time of praise now, just as Paul and Silas did in that jail in Philippi 2,000 years ago. Let's rejoice in all that, you, that the Lord brings to us in our walk with him. God of justice, Savior to all, came to rescue the weak and the poor. 
chose to serve and not to be served. Jesus, you have called us. Freely we receive now. Freely we will give. We must go. the broken we must go stepping forward keep us from just singing move us into action we must go to act just have shown us what you require freely we receive now freely we will give we must go home live to feed the hungry stand beside the broken we must go stepping forward from just singing, move us into action. We must go. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up and send us out, Lord. Fill us up and send us out. Fill us up. Send us out, fill us up and send us out, Lord. Fill us up and send us out, fill us up and send us out, fill us up and send us out, Lord. We must go, live to feed the hungry, stand beside the broken. We must go, stepping forward, keep us from just singing, move us into action. We must go, we must go, live to feed the hungry, stand beside the broken. We must go. From just singing, move us into action. We must go. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. Oh, 
my soul, praising my Savior all the day As we come to the end of our service, I would like to share with you a picture drawn by one of our members, June Grindley. Along with this picture, June received from God these messages of hope. As a star guided the Magi to Jesus, so God is guiding his people in these times. As God created light to separate night from day in creation, so we, his people, shine for him, showing and speaking the way, the truth and the life in the midst of dark times. When darkness increases, the light shines more brightly. June felt that she had to draw a six-pointed star of David, which often symbolizes the Jewish people. She felt that something significant is going to happen to the Jewish community this year. Thank you, June, for sharing those messages of hope with us. I also want to remind you of a few upcoming events in the church. We have prayer space tonight 
on Zoom again from 7 till 8, where you'll have the chance to get together with others to pray for things affecting our communities. And speaking of prayer, if you would like to pray more often during this time of isolation and staying in, why not consider joining a prayer triplet? Coming together in a small group like that is a great way to find support and fellowship. It's also a great way to offer support to others and to bless those around you by praying for them. Unlike small groups, prayer triplets don't tend to meet once a week. You can set the regularity of meetings, you can set the priorities in terms of what to pray for and what to discuss, and you can also be really flexible with staying in touch. Whilst you can meet on Zoom or in WhatsApp, you can also message each other with encouragements and prayer requests in between meetings. It's a really great way of getting to know people, deepening relationship and um, really learning to rely on God through prayer. Speaking of prayer again, um, prayer ministry is also available if you'd like somebody to pray with you. Um, prayer ministry, ministry members can be contacted at prayerministry at bearsdenbaptistchurch.com and this is a really fantastic um, outreach for those of you who really would benefit from somebody speaking God's wisdom um, into your lives and just praying God's love with you. I want to remind you also about the church meeting, which is happening on Wednesday the 20th of January at 7.30. Connection details will follow to members. And I would also like to remind you to come next week and join us as John Crabes brings us the next in the series of um, In Such Love, when we learn about God's love, his amazing love that casts out fear. Very relevant for the things that people are going through at this time of uncertainty and fear. So we look forward to seeing you next week and I just want to leave you with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>